It's reporting day for the rookies for Chicago Bears training camp, and while there has been no update on the contract situations of either Caleb Williams or Rome Odunze, we're going to talk about the other Chicago Bears rookies that have signed their deals and what to look out for them as training camp approaches. We're also going to look at a few Chicago Bears who have kind of gotten an opportunity to maybe earn a bigger role in this training camp and preseason period. And then we're going to look at another veteran edge prospect that the Chicago Bears could pursue that reportedly is available out there on the market. We're going to look at all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host, Air Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for today, y'all. So, have no official updates in regards to Kayla Williams and Romo Dunze's contracts. I'm going to kind of give maybe a daily update now that we're leading the training camp. Again, no real worry or concern to that and since the Bears aren't really taking the field for a full practice until Friday. But the rookies are reporting today, and there's some other rookies that we can look at. We already know Romo Dunze, Kayla Williams' contracts. We already know the guaranteed money that's, well, the, the money that's going to be there. The biggest thing is bigger portions of guarantees and things like that. We've already talked about it. Go and check out yesterday's video. But with that said, the rookies that still do need to report, uh, well, they have signed their contracts, and Kieran Ambagaje, Tory Taylor, and Austin Booker all have expectations as well for them coming into the season. When you look at Kieran Ambagaje specifically, he's a player that didn't really get to participate a lot in the offseason program due to a calf injury that was healing. But from what we've heard, he's going to be a full go on practice on Friday. He is fully healed. And with some of the doubt on the Chicago Bears offensive line, there is an opportunity for Kieran Amagaje to er, er, carve out a role for himself. The fact that he can play either tackle or guard in the league as well. Now, they may end up determining a specific position they want him to play at. But Kieran Amagaje, even as a rookie that is still raw, has a lot of upside and We've, we've seen the Bears not shy away from playing rookies on that offensive line before that still have some rawness to the game, Braxton Jones being one of them, right? So I'm not saying or expecting Kieran Amagaje to come in and necessarily overtake anybody for a starting role or anything like that, but he is a player to watch out for in this training camp period because if he's healthy and he lives up to even a portion of that upside that the Chicago Bears saw in him, we could see... Quite a bit of snaps for Kieran Amagaje, especially in this training camp and preseason period as well, as they're really trying to take a look at everything. And he could ultimately earn himself uh, uh, the right to play a bunch of snaps for the Chicago Bears once the pat once the real games are going on in the regular season. But Kieran, overall, it is a long term pick, right? This is an a upside pick by the Bears. But considering the flexibility, injuries that always are going to happen on that offensive line as well, and the fact that we still, as of right now, which it could. Uh, we we this could be debunked as early as Friday. We don't know what the status of Nate Davis is going to be for him to practice and things like that in training camp. Kieran Amagaje could have a a chance to earn himself something. And you know, overall the season, we know that we have an offensive line, and every offensive line in the in the NFL has its injury uh, times and players miss a, a few games or something. So Kieran's one to watch. And then Austin Booker. Austin Booker had a position that you know, if we are going to say any position that the Bears did not address, right, was the edge position. They really didn't go out other than drafting Austin Booker um, and, you know, bringing some some veterans in that could be debt pieces. The defensive edge position is pretty much the same as where it left off last season, minus Yannick Ngakwe not being on the roster. Yeah, he wasn't on the roster in the last, well, he was still on the roster, but he wasn't playing games for the Chicago Bears at the end of last season. So I, I've been saying for a while that I expect the Bears to really be looking at this edge position between Demarcus Walker between Austin Booker, Dominique Robinson, to really see how confident they are before they go out and potentially bring back Unique or bring back another a veteran edge or bring another veteran edge, I should say, rather than bring back, bring in another a, a veteran edge to, uh, to maybe shore up that position a little bit. So Austin Booker is a player that, you know, the upside there, what they said that he had like third round potential and things like that, the rawness is what really kept him from going, seemingly from going higher in that draft. But the combination of size, speed, strength, and with a uh, a defensive line, uh, well, defensive uh, coordinator now, and Eric Washington, who's been a defensive line coach for his career, how he likes to rotate that defensive line in and out. Austin Booker is going to have a lot of opportunities, but it starts with training camp, and especially him reporting Tuesday with what shape he's in, all that type of thing. 
but Austin Booker is another one. And then Torrey Taylor. I mean, he's going to be the starting punter for the Chicago Bears. He could be a one of those overlooked pieces that I I I just assume Torrey Taylor, despite injuries or anything like that, in case something like that pops up, he's going to be the Chicago Bears punter for probably in the next decade, right? That's just the way that it shapes up. But we already know what the expectations for him in. Legatron, as, as, as we are going to probably call him, like, he has that ability to be a truly special punter. And that's not something you say a lot about, you know, special teams and kickers and things like that. So Torrey Taylor as well, he just has to come in and be him. He has to come in. The Bears have already given a vote of confidence in, you know, uh, waving our punter. And Torrey Taylor is going to be that starting punter. And he's going to have an opportunity to help the Chicago Bears offense out and defense out with helping put uh, the opposing teams in awkward positions. So overall, the rookie class of the Chicago Bears all have their own things that we're looking forward to. And that's without Caleb Williams and Romo Dunze. We already know those guys expected to uh, – Caleb's the starting quarterback, right? And Romo Dunze is going to be a huge part and a big weapon for Shane Waldron. But don't overlook these other rookies and what they could potentially bring to the Chicago Bears this upcoming season as well. Now, with that said, training camp is always uh, offers a unique chance for a player to maybe step up, maybe shine, maybe show how they, how they worked on their game and their body and things like that from the, from the ending of last season to this season. So I want to talk about some of the players that I haven't spent a lot of time talking about in this offseason, but that could end up earning or playing a much bigger role than expected for the Chicago Bears this upcoming season. And the first one that I want to talk about is one of my favorite position groups for this team, and that's Terrell Smith. Terrell Smith didn't get as many opportunities as a Tyreek Stevenson or Kyler Gordon last year, but he's going to be a really big, important part. I look at Terrell Smith as somebody who... He's a perfect compliment that fourth cornerback come in because he can do a little bit of everything. Now, he was battling for Tyreek Stevenson at last year around this time to see which one of them was going to be the other starting cornerback. Tyreek Stevenson ends up winning that out and having a really good rookie season. But Terrell Smith is a was a very good effective cornerback last year for him. When you look at the production over it, like whatever it was, whether Johnson or, or Stevenson weren't in the game or whatever else, he had really good games. When you look at his starts against Washington and Minnesota last year, um, he had really good uh, performances in that. Matter of fact, through three total starts last season, Tyreek Stevenson had 23 tackles, one pass breakup, and one forced fumble. Ty- I, see, Ty- I said Tyreek Stevenson. Terrell Smith had 23 tackles, one pass breakup, and one forced fumble as well. Terrell Smith is could be a very overlooked part of the Chicago Bears defense because of the depth that we have in that secondary overall, and especially in that cornerback room. But do not do not overlook what Terrell Smith brings to that. Now, no longer probably going to battle with Tyree Stevenson for that starting cornerback role, but he's going to be somebody that they find a way to get in the game. And that may even be maybe even lining up at safety a couple of times to see what he can bring there in some matchups. But Terrell Smith has shown himself to me to be a playmaker, shown himself to good to be uh, in, in pass coverage and things like that. And he is somebody that, yeah, again, may not be or get the accolades of a, of a Tyreek Stevenson or a Kyler Gordon or definitely not a Jalen Johnson, but when you watch Terrell Smith in games, you see why he needs to be on that football field because this guy has tons and tons of talent and it's not done being tapped into yet. And uh, yeah, I hope that he's somebody who ends up staying on this Bears team for a long time because we've seen what he's been able to bring. Another guy who was a part of that same rookie class that I want to talk about who didn't really have a lot of opportunities last year and that's Noah Sewell, right? Noah Sewell, who was looked at as kind of a steal at where he got drafted in the in the fifth round, right? People really looked and understood what he was going to bring, the bloodline that he came from, and he was at one point seen as somebody who had first-round talent before his final season in college, but he ended up going in the fifth round to the Chicago Bears in that linebacking group that inclu- includes Jack Sanborn, um, um, TJ Edwards, and Tremaine Edmonds. Uh, and so that group... What it brings, it didn't really leave a whole lot of opportunity for Noel Sewell. Now, he played primarily on special teams last year. And, you know, outside of he even had an injury in his rookie year, um, he's probably going to see a lot of times a, a time again on that special teams. But for him to come into this training camp and make it interesting, and again, I'm not saying any type of thing of Jack Sanborn not being here, but when you look at Noel Sewell, he is somebody that could, uh, uh, has the potential to end up picking up some of those snaps, especially if Jack Sanborn misses some games or something like that. So really look at uh, that. He's going to be in there with a man, Omigajia. I I always mispronounce his name as well. 
uh, for somebody who can also come in on that special teams, play that defensive uh, uh, position as well. But Jack Sanborn is in a contract year, and that's one of the contract years we don't talk a lot about is Jack Sanborn's contract year. But Noel Sewell is a guy that I do expect to play a much larger role than what he did last year. But even if he just thrives on special teams, Noel Sewell is a name that we could hear a lot next season as well. The next guy I want to talk about is uh, the, the other defensive tackle that we drafted last year, and that's Zach Pickens. When you look at his numbers last year, 20 tackles, one tackle for a loss, only a half a sack. But when you look at how he played, when you look at the tape and breakdown and things like that, Zach Pickens has a whole lot of potential. And while I do think it's a vote of confidence for, uh, this, uh, for both him and Javon Dexter, the fact that they didn't bring in any other veteran defensive tackles, he's going to get a whole lot of more opportunity paired with Eric Washington, who loves to develop guys on that, on that defensive line and who likes to rotate guys in and out. I think Zach Pickens is going to have a really big opportunity to earn himself some snaps and play well in those snaps as well. So don't overlook Zach Pickens. I think that he's easily going to play a much larger role than what he did last season. And I think the growth and development that both him and Javon Dexter have is going to make it kind of easier on those edges as well. So Really look out for, for Zach Pickens to, and what he does in training camp, how he takes advantage of the opportunities both there and in the preseason games. And then lastly is going to be a name that I know a lot of people aren't going to expect me to talk about, but that's Dominique Robinson. Much like when I talked about Austin Booker in the last segment, Dominique Robinson is at the position that the Bears didn't do a whole lot of addressing as far as bringing in outside talent. Yes, if the, if the Bears do look to get a veteran edge, Dominique Robinson is definitely somebody who could be on the bubble for the Chicago Bears team for sure. And, he, and new competition is there with him in Austin Booker and Jacob Martin, who are going to be fighting for those opportunities. But reportedly, Dominique Robinson has really changed his body from the end of last season. He's bigger, um, and it looks like he's, he's gotten quite a bit bigger, which could help him kind of more so muscle his way through some of those offensive linemen in the NFL. And so Dominique Robinson understands what he's fighting for. He is fighting for a roster spot here. Make no mistake about it. He is on the bubble, and he is one of these players that if the Bears do bring in a vet, I expect Dominique Robinson to be cut. But if he can come in and at least get back to showing that ability as a depth piece that he showed in his rookie year, we could be talking about Dominique Robinson kind of, you know, playing a larger role. He has a, offense, a, a defensive coordinator now that is going to believe in those defensive linemen, that is going to want to rotate those defensive linemen a lot. And so it's up to Dominique to earn that role, that next step for him. And we'll see if he can, but don't overlook the chances of Dominique Robinson being a name that we hear may impress more than initially thought during training camp. And so look out for that as well. Other names that I kind of want to throw in there is, of course, names that we've talked about a little bit already. Valus Jones. I, I just It's going to be an interesting training camp for Valus, right? Because again, much like uh, Noah Sewell, he's going to be primarily on that special teams first. Um, but with his ability, his speed, how a Shane Waldron could get to use him in interesting ways in the run game and things like that. If Valus Jones just comes in and shows that he is ready and can hold on to the ball, those type of things, we could be talking about a much different season and outlook for Valus Jones. I'm just not ready to bet on it. I know a lot of Bears fans have thought like the new kickoff rules could be something that benefits him. I've always looked at it as saying, I don't know if it necessarily benefits him as much as some people with not having that extra time to generate and get up to full speed. But Valus is another interesting one to watch. Him and Tyler Scott, I'll say, right? Because while the top three wide receivers are going to get most of the conversation, and rightfully so, but you still need other wide receivers that can step in there at times. There are going to be times where players need breaks or a player sits out a game, things like that. And so Tyler Scott is another one that I'm really interested to watch how the conversation goes around him in training camp because at being 5'11", 185 pounds, the speed that he does bring, do the Bears look to use that because hopefully we're running more slant routes and things like that, and Tyler Scott could take advantage of opportunities like that, but he's a name that I'm really, really going to be paying attention to see if we even hear much from Tyler Scott because if we don't, I think that that may, that may be even louder if we don't hear very much um, from him. And then, of course, the backup quarterback position both Tyson Bajan and Austin Reed. And like I've said before, um, I know Tyson Bajan. I know the Bajan baddies love, love Tyson Bajan. And you still get, uh, uh, you know, some, some Bears fans that hope he's going to be, which is weird, I hope he's going to be the starting quarterback. But Brett Ripon is somebody who's a veteran, who knows the system, if he makes the team, if he doesn't make the team, whatever. But 
if the Bears do go with Austin Reed over at Tyson Bajan or whatever else happens there, I think that says to what Shane Waldron feels which quarterback best suits their system. Tyson Bajan and Austin Reed are very similar players when you look at their collegiate success, going to smaller schools, things like that. And I think it may come down to who best kind of grasps the offensive system of a Shane Waldron that may end up getting the nod there to, to being on the roster. And oh, it could still be Tyson Bajan. Austin Reed could very well end up on the practice squad this year where the Bears, you know, take some other things and do some other look at some other things. So I don't want to make it seem like it's this huge decision that the Bears have to make because it's really not. But it's an interesting one to watch what the Bears do there, at least in my opinion. And that's kind of my thought process there. But you guys can let me know. I want to hear from you guys. Who are some of the players that you think could actually surprise in training camp? And then maybe tomorrow we do some uh, uh, episode on some of the players that may actually disappoint in training camp because some of the guys that I named may also end up being on that list as well. But let me know what you guys think on that. But before we go, I want to talk about a veteran edge that the Bears could look to bring in as a possibility. And for this, I'm going to go to Greg uh, Bedard. Uh, he's, a, he's a Patriots. Uh, he covers the Patriots, a former pro bowler and things. He said this. What I know is he may be playing, uh, for, sorry, about Matthew Jadon, right? A veteran uh, edge in this game uh, who seemingly is having a contract dispute with the New England Patriots. I definitely could have for formatted that a little bit better to let you know who I was going to talk about. But he said this. What I know is he may be playing nice publicly, and he has. He said all the right things. And if you want to believe him, take him at his word. Go right ahead. I'm not going to stop you. What I can tell you is from the people I've talked to, he's not going to play under his contract, at least for the Patriots. I can't talk about any place else. That's my understanding. I don't know exactly what's been communicated to the team, but that is my un uh, understanding. Now, Matthew Janon, in a, in a case like this, is honestly somebody who only has one year left on his deal when you look at the money. That last year of his contract as well isn't huge. It's $6.5 million, it, but it's a cap hit of $14 million with the signing bonus as well. Could the Patriots take on some of that money? Things like that. But it is a deal that the Bears could very well look if they aren't confident in that um, in the edges that they have here in Austin Booker, Demarcus Walker, to be able to bring the pressure that they want. Matthew Janon is a player that I wouldn't mind the Bears taking a look at. He's somebody that is still productive. He's 31 years old. You're not attaching long-term kind of risk there. You're giving a, a year of maybe Austin Booker to develop or find your edge next season. This is a guy who last year, in only uh, four games played, still had four sacks. And if you look at the last two seasons in 2021-22, he played all 17 games, and he had 12 and a half and 15 and a half sacks, respectively, in those seasons as well. This is a guy who can still absolutely produce for you while maybe even being a mentor to your young edge in Austin Booker. Yes, you still have that in Montez Sweat as well, but you kind of know what he's going to bring if he's going to stay healthy and be on the field. The questions are, are, are you going to take a risk on somebody who just only played four games last season, but he's been relatively healthy over his career? When you look at it, other than last year, the minimum amount of games that he's played in his career other than the four last year was 14 games in the 2016 and another 14 in the 2020 season. Other than that, it's 16s and 17s across the board for Matthew Jadon. And I think in this team that, and I talked about it yesterday, you're no longer just a rebuilding team. You're now a team that's still building and developing, but it is a team that you're trying to get wins. This would be the type of move to me that would signify that you're bringing in somebody who is a veteran there, 6'3", 270, that can absolutely get to the quarterback. The question is, is health. And if you look at that question, which, Ryan Poles would do is do all the due diligence on making sure this guy is going to be able to stay healthy. But if you find out that he's going to be able to do that, this is a guy that on the opposite side of Montez Sweat, listen, much like you taking a one-year flyer in Keenan Allen, and he may not be here long-term because then you may look at Romo Dunze ready to step in that role and get a different third. I think one season of Matthew Jadon would help the Bears tremendously in being able to get to the quarterback, make it easier on your linebackers, make it easier on your secondary. I would love an acquisition like this for the Bears. Now, this comes down again to how confident the Bears are on the edges that they have that aren't Montez Sweat on, on, on this roster. And that's what it will come down to, as well as what the Bears are willing to give up. We know that you know they didn't have a lot of draft picks this season. We have, what, six or seven draft picks next season, I think we have. So they may not want to give up the flexibility if a pick is even on the table. But if it's not, the Bears could very well make a move for somebody like Jadon to bring into this roster and help be able to get to the quarterback and abuse uh, opposing quarterbacks, which is going to continue this thing of, I think we're going to have a top 10 defense in the league this year. So 
Let me know what you guys think on that as a veteran option for the Chicago Bears. As always, make sure you guys are following us at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Chicago Bear Central at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. That's thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, I town up, bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break Media.